a participation of two board members and 25 staff members to attend the student discipline training at ICOE on March 21st, 2013. Um, discussion? Yes, this one is uh, the what day is, uh, March 21st? Yes, March 21st. Okay. The I like to go into to into to board members, or we, we can increase the more, more board members, since the other entity doing it. Go ahead, Mr. Armendariz. Ask again, Mr. Kim, if board. Yeah, I like to go there too. Mr. Kim, it, the reason yes. that that a board member is going is because I was scheduled to be at that. Uh, at this training that was held here that you attended, so I no, withdrew my name. Sorry, you know what? We no school board members no attended. No school board mem mem no. members attended, and we had paid for two school board members to attend. Who was scheduled to be here? Um, Mr. Kim and Miss Biscar, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I withdrew because and you withdrew you because we couldn't have three, and so nobody showed up. And nobody showed up. But uh, other entities, not it's not from the our our school district. So any workshop, any of even five board members can can be attend over there. This one is from the ICOE. The last okay. time was uh, even the ICOE it was here, the school district. So they cannot be more than two. But when we go to workshop to outside those our jurisdictions, mm -hmm. we can be able to three or five or whatever to we can have over numbers. Mr. Wiley. I'm looking up the Brown Act right now. Um, I know that there are times when a majority of the board members attend a same function, it has to be posted as a board meeting. This may be an exception because it's 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 a if I, I, I might need more facts, so I might not be able to answer it tonight. Uh, but if people from the general public can attend, uh, not just the school district, then it, it might have different implications. So I'll, I'll, let me look into the facts on that a little bit deeper. It's not the general public, but it is board members and other staff members from different schools. Different schools. <coughs> different districts. Uh -huh. So we consider like uh, the ICOE, they are the one who's conducting the workshop. We are attending, we're not having a meeting. Okay, here's what the Brown Act says. This, this is uh, not a meeting if the attendance of a majority of the board members of a legislative body at a conference or similar gathering open to the public that involves a discussion of issues of general interest to the public or to the public agencies of the type represented by the legislative body, provided that a majority of the members do not discuss among themselves, other than as part of the scheduled program, business of a specified nature that is within the subject matter jurisdiction of the local agency. Uh, nothing in, in this paragraph is intended to allow members of the public free admission to a conference or similar blah, 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 blah. Um, there is also an exception. Well, no, that would not apply. Um, it's similar to the is, exception if, if this of, is of attending a, a conference. Yes. Okay, if this is open to the public and the board members that are attending do not discuss business among themselves, since this seems to be open to the public, it would be within the exception of a meeting and a majority could apply, uh, could attend. Okay. I think there was a difference at a recent meeting because it was in the district and it was not open to the public. Okay. This, this, is, this is open to, to, to staff from districts. This is not open to parents or the community. This is a training. This mm -hmm. is an actual training put, put on by ICOE and we have to pay, it would be just like the trainings that uh, your firm puts on at CASBA, and it's, it's just a discipline training. But it's, it's more attuned to a, 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 a CSBA or, or some yes. conference mm -hmm. type of thing, where you have to pay to attend. We have to pay here too. Yeah. My concern is that we not have people sign up and not show up and spending money that we we should be good caretakers of. 
I think that in terms of, of the uh, meeting being considered open to the public, I do think it's an open to the, the general educational public, so I think that statute would be met. But I, I agree with um, Trustee uh, Aguilar that we just need to be mindful that if we signed up for the uh, workshops or trainings that we attend because we are expending yeah. funds for them. I would uh, say that we move forward on, on, on this and that we have perhaps another board meeting between now and then and we'll add the other additional ones. So can we move I, forward? I don't, I don't think there's, this is any different to what Ms. Um, Mallory put on for the Apple computers where there was mm -hmm. districts that had five board members there, yeah. all five board members present yeah. because mm -hmm. it, 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 it talked about um, it, it talked about how we can facilitate better for the district mm -hmm. and that is what this is and and actually uh, this is the meeting that we told you that uh, ICOE had recommended us to do for for the expulsions okay I understood that one was closed and it was only for staff at the school district but this is a, this is this being being put up by the attorney from ICOE Okay. Richard Courier. And the, the and the attendance is broader in scope. Yes. For this one. So this I think this the one that you're considering now is an exception. Mm -hmm. As opposed to the one that was only for your staff. Absolutely. Yeah. So can we have an so that we end the discussion is there a, a, well, can, we a can proposal amend to amend the motion to reflect up to five board members and yes. 25 mem staff members to attend the student discipline training at ICOE on March 21st, 2013. Yes. I would like to add that and if a board member doesn't show up, they have to pay the, the price. Can you word that in a motion, Ms. Ms. Duarte? Well, I make a motion that um, it, the, the training is open to all five board members and if the board members do not show they will incur the cost of the of, of, of the training is there a second let me just get this straight so if the member doesn't show up the member that has to pay back collectively unified the hundred dollars that collectively paid up front is that your motion? If you sign up if for you it. sign up, which is for free, but if you don't show up, then you pay that. I will second that. Motion by Duarte, second by Calderon. In order to have five board members participate with the stu and 25 staff more members to attend the student discipline training at ICOE on March 21st, 2013 with the stipulation that if a member uh, confirms attendance and does not the show, board. a member the of board. the board yes. does uh, confirms attendance and does not show up is responsible for reimbursing the district. Okay, is there any discussion? Well, the that day was at the school district building was a set it up. Mr. Kimmett limited to this regarding this, yes. th it's, a, it's the whether the motion. So that's why I, w I feel like I'm un un unsafe to come to district building, so I didn't come. That's very busy, so I'm gonna go. As, you know, as, as far as discussion goes on, on this particular item, and, and for clarification, because as far as I understand, we all get, um, we've all, since I've been on the board, we get an email that um, these, these events are coming forth. We have then either, we're asked to um, state, you know, whether we want to go or not. And I would think that any one of us as adults can say, I can go, and that we set it on our own calendar, on our agenda, and that after a certain amount of time, um, participation sort of ends if if we come at the beyond yes. the last minute which is what happened um, the last time when there was a district meeting and I said I want to go to that and at the very last minute there was another board member that said I want to go so I opted out so that we wouldn't be 
uh, a majority. There, it, we just we have to be able to communicate better and say if we say we're going to go someplace and someone says, well, just to be responsible, I opted out, um, so somebody else can go. So I said, now, so then I'll go to this one. We have that information given to us uh, via email. We we each one of us has the responsibility to let administration know so that they can make all of the appropriate arrangements. I know I make arrangements in my on my calendar and when I say I'm going to go somewhere, I very consciously make the effort to go. I think this particular amendment to this request is beyond a last minute and pretty irresponsible to make. It's on here to say to board members. I want to think that it's because I had expressed um, interest in going to this because I opted out of the other one because there was going to be a third board member. Um, so, and, and in terms of enforcing some sort of a payback, you have to have some sort of parameters or, around around that as well. So I, I think it's sort of um, vague, you know, what what that would look like, and and, and um, ensuring that that happens. Although it, it should, and I know since I've been on the board, there have been um, some things that we all say we're going to go to, and we don't all get to go to, um, and they get paid. So. I, I just want to say that to this board. If we say we're going to go somewhere and, and there's some deadline to register, that we really honor that. Thank you. Seeing no further discussion, call for the question and move on. I mean, let's go to the vote. All those in favor signify uh, by saying aye. 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 Mr. Kemp? Clarification is, uh, has to be by payback. But the board member, if not attended, correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. So can you uh, can you read the motion again, please? The motion is: um, if a board member signs up, they will reimburse the district the cost of the training. If they don't show if up, they don't show up <laughs> to the training. Okay. Yes, but uh, but this uh, is not fair to some. So everybody they have some issues. They they might not be able to go, and then they uh, was called the punishing their intention is not fair. Madam President, yes. um, if there's ample time given to the district office and to the superintendent, we make every effort to cancel and try to get our money back. But we do need to be notified of that. Thank you. Ms. Zuno Vizcarra? No. No. Motion passes. Three zero. Three two, sorry. Item four B, participation of uh, Enrique Camarena Junior High School ASB advisor Monica Rendon to attend the CADA conference for ASB advisors in San Diego on February 28th through March 2nd. Mr. Kim. Yes. I always are saying this one is <coughs> the, the what's called the, the entitled to be staff developments. We should, the district should pay, not the children's money to pay for that. So I said, to, I said to this one approve with the chi uh, school district step uh, step development fund to pay to them. Is that a motion? Yes, I make the motion to approve with the school district pays on the teachers. Okay, the motion is uh, to have the participation of uh, the ASB advisor to attend the Cater Conference for ASB advisors in San Diego, California on February 28th through March 2nd, 2013 with the stipulation that the money come from staff development. Is there a second? Can I ask a question? Why, why is it through ASB funds? Is there some stipulation that it has? Ms. Has Spencer, is are you getting up to answer the question, or uh, just the fact that can you come to the podium, please? 
Thanks. Good evening, board. Um, Your I microphone's not on. Oops. Thank you. Now the red light's on? Is it working now? Okay. Um, just to make the point that staff development that would have to be that would have to come from general fund the normal <coughs> professional development fund that we have is categorical and it's for academic and ASB is considered uh, an extracurricular not an academic so it couldn't come out of those funds for so staff development so should it be general fund <coughs> it, ha it would need to be general fund but even though general fund we are we are spending money for the children's we let the children raise the money for themselves they can use it the school district cannot uh, should not to let the children's money using by the teachers that staff the developments or if we need it we need send by the school district money not by the ch children's money okay. we're talking about the peanuts money that pennies okay. we're supposed to spend money for the, our children's not for the consultants is there a second to mr. Kim's motion See none. Motion dies like for a second. Is there a sec? Is there a second motion? Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second that. Motion by Aguilar, seconded by Calderon. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Discussion. I'm sorry. Discussion, Ms. Duarte. Um, I understand Mr. Kim's point of view that you know, children's fundraising money should be used. But this conference is an every year conference that we go through. We've been through, you and I, Ms. Aguilar, have been through this three times already. Um, we have the minutes in the back of the meeting. All students were present. All students voted. They made a motion. They seconded it. Um, there's, there's the, how much it's going to cost, the $295. Um, it's, it's their club. And if there's nothing in their bylaws, if they have any bylaws or maybe the district policy, I don't know. If there's anything that, if there's not anything that allows them to do this, then, you know, it's it's their money and they, they have a choice. I, don't, I, I hope that they're not being coerced. coerced into allowing her to go. But, you know, it's a regular meeting. We have all the, we have the minutes here, so. They chose chose for her to go, uh, or allowed for the funds to be used in that manner. Okay. Is this, is this a conference that uh, ASB directors go every year? Yes. Hi, uh, every the year. high school and the uh, junior highs. Yes. Okay. Ms. Vizcarra, do you have any discussion on this item? Um, no, other than to just sort of a, a continuance from Ms. Duarte's point of view, and you know, this is really students learning government and, and my my son is is in this um one of the obviously he took a vote here um <laughs> i'll talk to him about it later but uh you know this <laughs> this is uh, is uh you know students learning learning government and you know they're they're making they're having these meetings and they're they're um you know following their own their own rules and guidelines and and i and i know having these discussions they're amongst themselves so I know, sort of kudos to them for, for putting these things and, and having uh, discussions about it at, at their age. Okay, okay. so we had a motion. I call for the question. We had a motion for um, to approve by myself, by, by me, and seconded by Calderon. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 No. Aye. Motion passes for one. Item H, Superintendent recommends approval of each of the following items item one 2013 csba delegate assembly election nominations for subregion 18b okay do we have a motion we have the the denoted the the incumbents, Ralph Fernandez Brawley Union High School District and Diana Garcia Ruiz from Heber Elementary School District. Madam President, 
Yes, sir. Um, and the consent, item, consent agenda, did we do 3B and 3C? Are we yes. going to do that later? We did. We approved the agenda. Sorry, yeah. never mind. So, yes. is there a motion? I have some question before the motion. So suppose we, we vote to position? I believe so, sir. Yes. It says number of vacancies to vote for no more than two candidates. So we there have are only two candidates. candidates. Make the motion to approve it. Okay. Can you can you stipulate the names please? For oh, the record. Ralph Fernandez and the uh, Diana the Garcia Luis. Uh, okay. The motion is to um, rec recommend or approve Ralph Fernandez from Brawley Union High School District and Diana Garcia Luis from Heber Elementary School District. Is there a second? I'll second that. Motion by Mr. Kim, seconded by Ms. Duarte. Any discussion? Seeing, um, oh, yes, go ahead. I, I have Ms. discussion. Duarte. Uh, did, you, did you get an application? Did I get an we application? We had nominated you to be in one of the delegates. Yeah, but I guess these are the numbers that came out, or these are the, I don't know. I don't know where it went from there. But you did fill out the application. Yeah, I did. We need to yeah. check because these people have been on board for a while already and we don't get anything from CASBA and we have talked about it already that mm -hmm. we would want to change from CASBA into the Latino, but. There is a provision for writing candidate name. Not that I'm where advocating it. Oh, <laughs> I want to write your name. <laughs> we nominated you. <laughs> Oh, we have a motion on the floor. Okay, you have mo um, motion by Mr. Kim, seconded by Ms. Duarte. No further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Item H2, award and contract with Verizon Wireless for telecommunications cellular service. <coughs> Ms. Ambris, who will speak to this? Dr. Spencer. Dr. Spencer, can you please come to the podium? <laughs> please go ahead, Ms. Spencer. Uh, basically, we um, let the, co let the uh, I'm sorry, we published the proposal for the uh, wireless service contract. Um, we had four people, or four organizations apply. We convened a panel, looked over the uh, proposals that they had made and selected the one that was the least expensive and provided adequate service. It happens to be the company that we currently are served by uh, that not only lets us save money because they have a lower rate than the other three, but we also don't have to buy additional equipment for this time. Four and members on the panel. Uh, that was about it. Okay. Any questions from the board? Yes. Mr. Kim. What happened to the yield rate? This is a yield rate has been um, implied or this is not going to go by the yield rate? I believe that the E rate falls into this one. This, this is, is the E rate. rate bid. Yeah. This is the E rate bid? What I understand, last year we lost the E-rate. Not all of the E-rate. There's There are several different parts to E-rate, mm -hmm. and this is one that we still mm -hmm. have. We still have it. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Seeing Mr. Calderon is not there, Mrs. Duarte. Here. Okay. <laughs> Did you want to speak to this item? No. Ms. Duarte. How many, how, how many phones are, do, oh, sorry. How many phones do we have on here for, for, for this? Uh, 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 Excuse me, I can't talk tonight. 115 cell phones. Are they walkie talkies or? Well, no, because they have Verizon the doesn't have the. Well, this says that all, d all devices will require push to talk capability, though we don't 
normally use that. I didn't think Verizon had cap push button yeah. capability. No, they don't. Javier, do you remember? I don't think so. Uh, they have the yeah. they have it by the time I, that's what I think. They I have the cell phone, the but they don't have the, yeah. <coughs> so who, do, who are we paying the push to talk to? It's a cell phone. I understand, but I, I know that there's push to talk phones, and I know they're not Verizon. They have to be Nextel. So we have Nextel Sprint in the district also. No, we stopped using the Nextel on Verizon. Verizon is the bill that we're paying now. They're the current provider. So we don't have anybody with push to talk? They're using their own cell phones then? No, not walkie-talkies. Cell phones. I have here um, on page five. It says on the third, um, on the second bullet point, it says all devices will require push-to-talk capability. Well, that's the bid. That's yeah. what we're requesting. Mm -hmm. But because I mean, I I know I know there's employees. I know there's staff that they have walkie-talkie Sprint phones or Nextel. So I know we used to have. I was told that unless we didn't have any more. Most okay. Okay. I'm not sure. Unless there I will check their them. own phone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hmm. Can we look into that, please, Maria? Mm -hmm. Okay. I have no more questions, Madam President. Okay. Ms. Uno? No, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Yes. Pence. Okay. Is there a motion to award a contract with Verizon Wireless for Telecommunications? Cellular services. I make the motion to approve it. Motion by Mr. Kim. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Zuno, Mrs. Zuno Vizcarra. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Did you say aye? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Item H3, participation and reimbursement of Andrew Les, intern psychologist, to attend the National Association of School Psychology Conference on February 11th through the 16th, 2013, in Seattle, Washington. Um, Ma Madam President, M Mr. McFadden wanted to speak to this item. Mr. McFadden, can we you come to the podium, please? On the agenda. Can somebody turn the AC off? Thank you. I'm freezing. It was Kim and Zuno Yes, I wasn't able to attend uh, the last board meeting. Uh, this item was on the agenda. I understand there were some questions, and so um, I'm here to answer questions. Essentially what the request is, we have a school psychologist intern, uh, Andra Less. Uh, she is an, it's a not paid position, uh, but she's working full time with us and has worked with us for the entire school year. She's not received any type of reimbursement uh, for anything, any expenses up to this point in time. Uh, we had an opportunity to, uh, to help support her in attending uh, a conference, and uh, we did so. In terms of the expenditures associated with it, they're very minimal. Uh, in terms of the airfare that was there, uh, she along with uh, two of her uh, colleagues uh, shared a room up there. Uh, didn't pay for any uh, additional uh, workshops, etc., uh, but used the uh, basically the student uh, student cost of $109 for the workshop. So just attended the, the basic. Uh, part of it is that uh, for Andrea as well as other individuals that I work with, uh, I view her as a professional. I view her as part of the team. Uh, this would be an individual that I would like to keep here. Now whether we have the funding or not, I don't know, but. Uh, you know, if we did, it would be something that I'd like to keep here. I think the, the training uh, that had been provided does provide uh, a benefit, a direct benefit to the students that we have. Uh, certainly will be for the remainder of the year uh, and hopefully into the future. I do have a question. Thank you. Um, Mr. Kim. Starting with Mr. Kim, do you have questions regarding this item? First of all, the, 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 this person is not paying by the school district intern because intern? We're not paying them any? Uh, pay no, no, we're not, pay, not paying them anything. So she is uh, like the volunteer level as an intern? Well, I guess that's semantics. I would say it's a little bit more than a volunteer. 
we have an agreement with volunteers we don't have agreements but the district does have an agreement with the university uh, to ensure certain elements of training uh, etc and so from the paid position no she's not being paid I would say it's much more than uh, than just a volunteer position then why we have a why we have a, this one agenda after we send them why we could have a big further meeting before she go on I believe it was on before no um, okay well then if it's not then we didn't get the paperwork in uh, on time I mean that would be my fault so I like I don't like to see the people get uh, just follow the order to go there people get responsible but this one someone who's in responsible they have to pay back pay to this person I believe because it's it's, this is intern is training. That's uh, it's training or study is by herself that has to be paid. That. That's the first, first, my first my first one. This intern we don't have any obligation to train them, train them our uh, from our side, but we don't have have to send them to training. And second is the time time being is not in in the before the board uh, before the any action taken. They action took it. And then they put on the board meeting. Okay. Well, in terms of the, the second part, the action mm -hmm. taken—that was my fault uh, for not getting the paperwork processed. Uh, I have a difference of opinion with respect to uh, the training of the individual. This is a professional. Uh, yes, she is uh, receiving some training. The training that she does receive provides a direct benefit to to our students. Uh, and again, this is much more than just a volunteer. Typically, the interns are paid. They're paid positions. From a business standpoint, I understand getting free services, uh, but that really doesn't sit well for me from a professional standpoint. Uh, it would have been nice to be able to pay her something. We weren't able to. Uh, and again, for this, from a training standpoint, I believe that it benefits us. Uh, in terms of the, uh, the lateness with the paperwork, I mean, that's, uh, that's on me, and I do apologize for that. Okay. Mr. Calderon, do you have questions? I, I just... Uh I have uh, some concerns just like Mr. Kim. Now, you, this, you said this is not a paid position, it's an intern. And all of us that have gotten uh, teaching certificates or counseling certificates or psychology certificates, credentials, know that we have to put in our hours, okay? Because I did put in my hours. I didn't get paid, okay? So it's not that she's doing us a favor because she's not doing us a favor. She needs to get her hours done. Okay, so let's get that clear. Whether she got it here, she's got, if she doesn't get it here, she's going to get it somewhere else because that is required by the university to get those hours done. Okay, so that intern, she needs to get it. She is, we're not doing it in a favor. That she's not doing us a favor. Okay, the fact that she's working full time and she's helping us, I do appreciate that. Okay, because w when you're a professional like I was, I was working full time and I was doing my hours little by little. Now, she's spending full-time hours here with us that I do appreciate and uh, and I don't have a problem with this I don't I don't have a problem with reimbursing her because she's she's getting trained be, because she got trained however I would like to see and I would like to ask my superintendent to talk to all the directors that if the paperwork needs to be done on a timely manner okay I don't have a problem with paying somebody to get a job done or to get some training okay but we have protocols Okay, and I'm going to ask my superintendent to make sure that she gets a point across to, to all of you guys. It needs to be done on a timely manner. I don't think it's going to get denied. I mean, I don't think requests like these are going to get denied, but they need, we need to follow protocol. We no, all I, have I protocol. understand. We all have protocols. Okay. 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 Ms. Duarte? Nothing. I think um, Mr. Calderon expressed my sentiments. Ms. Zunubiscara? Um, the the length of the the agreement that we have is just 2012 2013 is that the duration of this internship here with us yes it'll be uh, done in june okay and um is there a specific gr agreement that we have with with the program with the university program where we 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 get the benefit of having an intern and at the same time it's sort of reciprocal because the intern gets the benefit of, of the hands-on training in an educational environment, et cetera. We have an agreement set up Correct, with the yes. university? Okay. Yes. 
I have a question. Um, does the content, does, did the content of the psychology conference in Seattle pro provide um, training that is a direct benefit to our students? Yes. I've got a question. Will it establish a precedent that this is what we'll do with uh, interns? You know, honestly, uh, I'd like to present something to the board uh, for that. And, and again, I, I understand what you're saying. All of us, when we did our internships, you know, we had to kind of, you know, give it up. The other piece is that, um, you know, things really have changed. And again, from a district standpoint, more districts now, both from a counselor and a school psychology standpoint, are in a position that they're, they're, the positions are needed. And they try to provide something, whether it be a little bit of, um, of compensation, maybe not a whole salary, a stipend, something to uh, to help the, the individual. Again, this is the college student uh, that has really given up time, uh, you know, the mileage, and just a number of other things. It would be something that I would like to uh, uh, to write up and to propose. Now, whether the board accepts it or not, uh, I can uh, you know can live with that. But I do believe that we need to treat the individuals as professionals, and again, not for excessive, uh, you know, travel trips, etc. Uh, but just something that, again, to is provides a direct benefit to uh, to our stu our students uh, and the district. Okay, and I, I'll just add that uh, I share the the concern in terms that that it, things like this be submitted on a timely basis. Okay, uh, Madam President, um, Mrs. Armendariz wanted to speak a bit to that. Please. You know what? I am so impressed with this intern. Every single intervention that she tries um, with our students, she's presented cases or um, manifestation determinations with Cami um, Sturdivant. She has really, really impressed me. You know I'm a student advocate, and every single intervention that she tries and brings to the school, the one-on-one, -on -one bringing the parents in, um, working with the student and making sure that the student um, does the best that the student can do academically, I am really impressed with her. So if she, if she went to that training and she can bring some of what she learned and continue to work with our students, even if it's to the end of the school year, it's worth every single minute that she spends with them. Thank you, Mr. I Mr. don't have any question about the whole uh, what's called uh, professionalism. I believe everybody deserves to get uh, respect. And, uh, but the problem we have here, Mr. administration, Mr. always they making mistakes. We don't get any no. discipline for that. Yeah. That's my problem is. Mm -hmm. Now my problem is the, I'm not trying to jeopardize this individual for because follow the order. My problem is who gave the order? Who didn't bring this one issue to us? I think we never Kim. ever can Mr. You finish? Kim. We never ever Mr. Kim. The them when they make the mistake. Mr. Kim, you're out of order. I'm not out of order. Yes, you are. You're, I'm still you're, catching you're, 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 you're out of order, Mr. Kim. Okay. Bring your tone down. It's a, it's a, for me, Mr. It's a, Kim, we never you're, had you're, that. So. You're out of order. You had your opportunity to speak. Well, this is the discussion and questioning. You don't have, you don't, no, I Mr. don't have Kim. to hear opinions. And they, they pay tax the $200? I see the taxi and shuttle $200 expenses. Mr. Kim, you had your opportunity to speak. You don't limit my, uh, my, uh, my yes, abilities. Yes, I do, Mr. Kim. You had your, we have a protocol. I'm not you gonna, have I'm a not protocol. Gonna, you're not, as a I'm chair. Not you, can, it. you can facilitate the meeting. That's your, your duties. Is there a motion? Is there a motion? Motion. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. I will second that. Motion by Zuno Vizcarra to approve. Second by Calderon. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 No. Mr. Kim? Well. Yes sir, no, Mr. Kim. Okay. Then I have to approve it. Okay. I don't know Motion to get passes 4 1. Item H4 adoption of job des description for Director of Human Resources. H4. Make a motion for discussion. Motion by Ms. Duarte for discussion of adoption of dis job description for Director of Human Resources. Is there a second? 
I will second for discussion. Second for discussion by Mr. Calderon. Um, Ms. Go ahead. I, I understand that there was a, a change on the education and experience on this um, job description. Um, but my my thing is I don't I don't I don't see it combining the um, health and welfare aspect of it on this job description. So basically, the only thing that I see here is administration and risk management. That's all I see here. Um, I know that there was a lot of um, collaboration by the human resource director and our insurance companies. There was a lot of collaboration there. Um, it wasn't it wasn't the responsibility of the staff. It was the responsibility of the director. I don't see any job description as to that under the, the under this title. And also, um, I, I don't know. I mean, we we know how this high salary came about because the director had the position of HR director and personnel commission, but. They're both human resources, both personnel commission and and human resources, but the salaries are totally different. And we have the classified directors at 74,000 maximum to 81,000. We have the human director, this one, the human resource director at 100,000 to 104,000. And we have the personnel commissioner at 74,000, 81,000, just as classified director. The, we haven't had a certificated staff in that position, and we don't know who's going to be hired, if it's going to be classified or certificated, but I would like to see the salary be brought down to the classified directors because right now the classified directors have the same salary. Personnel director has the salary as a classified director, but yet human direct human resource is a hundred thousand. I don't see the difference on there unless there is another title onto this job description that deserves the one hundred thousand. And I know we talk about ret uh, retaining employees here and stuff, but some of us know how this hundred thousand came about on the on the job description, but I, I see human directors, human resource directors in other places that are being advertised and they're not at a hundred thousand. If they are at a hundred thousand, they have another duty which is admi uh, administrative duty or is it business management or it's something else with that title. But single handed like this, I would like to see it under the classified directors, just like the other directors that we have here on, on this district. This is the only salary that is separate from them. Well, I it's agree with, I concur with uh, Ms. Duarte. It was, that was the salary schedule about, uh, about four years ago, the, when the former superintendent, Ms. Luna, came, she, when they, they, she raised up the, these salaries. And they, when that time they were combined personal commissioner and the HR director, that's why they, that's why they raised the, these salaries. And now, after they uh, they uh, separate, they never go back to the salaries. I've been fighting for this one two years, and finally we are paying attention on this one. We should go back to the regular director's salary schedule, and also we should be able to certify certificate the position because. There's, there is a lot of uh, errors on the teachers, uh, 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 what's called the credentials. credential. Uh, we should be able to someone who hire for the cr uh, certificate credential to be able to deal with the credential. Mr. Calderon? I do have a, a problem with this. Last time I tried to talk about it, but I was very nicely uh, interrupted by the person who, was, who I was asking the question. So. Luckily, she's not here to interrupt me anymore. Um, but I do have a problem with this. Number one, 
uh, for districts our size, for districts that are big, and um, I consider our district to be a big district, usually, and in 10 minutes that I did my research, I found out that um, one, two, three, four, five, six school districts, and this is not a closed session item. Um, they have hum human resources, hum a human resources uh, uh, assistant superintendent or a director, but requires at least a master's degree, five years of experience, and a, a um, administration credential for human resources or for or, uh, tier two or something like that, whatever, whatever the, the classification is. So um, that's what I would like to do. Oh, that's what I would like to see, to add to this job description, uh, even if they want to call it a director of human resources, have the experience uh, upped a little bit in a, a, an admin credential uh, required, simply because of the size of our district. I did research in other districts, in a smaller districts, um, Heber <coughs> or Meadows, districts like that, they, they have a director of human resources, so sometimes they're combined, uh, and they don't require as much experience, but they're not as big as we are, okay? Uh, <coughs> I came up with Coachella Unified, Anaheim Union High School District, Eureka Union School District, Natom Natomas or Natomas Unified School District, Oxnard Union High School District, and Irvine Unified School District that all require <laughs> master's degrees and uh, admin credentials and this is not classified information you can go online and, and dig up this information for yourselves okay so uh, we do need a person in that position because uh, the superintendent does need that help and um, it is it but I feel that we need to get this a little bit more uh, careful consideration regarding the qualifications for the new person, or the new job description, I should say. Job description, not a Thank person. Thank you. Ms. Zuno Vizcarra. You know what, what Mr. Kim and Ms. Calderon and Ms. Duarte said are points that I would have made, so I concur with all of them. Okay, is, um, do we need to hear from Esther, or do you want to move on this? I would, I would, I would like to make a motion on this because we desperately need a human resource director. <laughs> um, but I would like to make a motion, but to change the classified management salary schedule to the true classified director salary schedule, which is 74,064 to the max of 81,773. Can you repeat that, please? I make a motion to approve the director of human resource job description at is but change the s salary schedule to reflect the classified director salary schedule based at 74,065 to max of $81,773. Ms. Duarte, can you add up on the cert with the certificate credential? Administration. Administra administra business administration credential? No. So with the, the certificate. Or certificated. Yes. School. Well, so because we do, we dealing with a uh, lot of teachers, certificate employees. Okay. And that person, without knowing the certificate law, is, is going to be is bring the issues and issues again. Um, but if we bring, I think I think it's on here already. Administers and procedures, programs, and employments of all personnel. No, but he, what he's talking in about is, bringing, is adding to the job to the, oh, to the requirements. To the education experience? Yes. Okay. okay. To the education experience to have um, administrative, no, administrative credential. Administration credential, yes. The appropriate administration, school administration credential. So okay. Moved, as stated. So, but that one is without the, without the so uh, excuse me. Clarification. Can I please state the motion and then okay. then you can continue discussion. So, as I understand it, you're making a motion to um, move forward and establish the the job description as submitted with the clarification that uh, a re administrative credential is required 
and that the salary schedule be moved from the 74,000 to 100? No. 74064 to 81773. 81773. Did you get that, Janet? Yes. Mm. All right. But the administration, I have some clarification. Yes. Administration uh, with the uh, certificate? Yeah, it's administration certificate. School administration, just like the certification that Ms. Ambriz has, Kay. that Ms. Hortensia has. There's a motion on the floor, is there a second? Okay. Motion by Ms. Duarte, second by Mr. Kim. Can you please read back the motion, Janet? Ms. Burgos. Trustee Duarte, motion to approve the HR job description with the clarification that an administrative credential is required and the salary schedule be as that as a classified management? Is that correct? Classified director. Classified director. Ma Madam President, may I inquire? Please go ahead. Is the intention to make this a credential position? Yes. Yes. Okay. They, need, they need it. Okay. If, it, if that's the intention, let me refer to um, Ed Code Section 44065, which requires uh, that uh, to be credentialed, the person has to serve 50% or more of certain duties including directing, coordinating, supervising, or administering any portion or, uh, or, uh, or all of the types of functions listed below. Um, the main function that would create the 50% or more is listed as number one in the statute. The, um, direct, coordinate, supervise, or administer, number one, the work of instructors and the instructional program for pupils. Um, if you include that as a representative duty, then the impact of that job, uh, of that element of the duties, plus the requirement of a credential, would remove the position from the classified service and the control of the personnel commission. And it will go along with, accordingly with uh, pay and salary. And also, let me point out that if it remains within the jurisdiction of the Personnel Commission, Education Code Section 45276 in the third paragraph provides <coughs> the position duties shall be prescribed by the board and qualification requirements for the position class shall be prepared and approved by the commission. That's correct. So if the intent is to make it a credential position, you have the authority to do that but I would also recommend that the job duties be uh, amended to include directing, coordinating, and supervising the work of instructors to make sure that it's 50% or more of credential work. And when we talk about instructors, is that principals or is that the teachers? It could be whatever you want. And if you want more definition in the, in the job description, you can include that. So then is the director of human resource will be able to evaluate teachers? Yes, if they have a credential. This is getting pretty complicated. Jesus Christ. Um, well, I, 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 would, so, I would. So this district has been violating for many, many years. No. <laughs> yeah, so I think, I think um, can we agree board members that we, we give direction to to incorporate all, all, everything that has been said and what Mr. Weiler just pointed out. Is but, is that's it, but is it feasible <coughs> for the employee to work 50% in well, the instruction? Well, that's why I'm saying that. That's, that's, that's a... It's, it, it's not. I mean, we're, we're going beyond... We're, it, it's not a, this is not a small school district. I would see it if it would be a small school district. It's not. I don't see that person actually doing 50% of the, of the instructional piece. Mm -hmm. The only thing I can see is checking their credentials and stuff like that when they're hiring and making sure that they're being updated and stuff like that. But I really don't see that person working with the instruction. What about curriculum? Q 
human resource slash curriculum? It's in the That's why I'm saying I think this is. We already uh, have a director of curriculum, don't we? That's why I'm saying I'm asking the board, let's have them incorporate all of that. This is too piecemeal, I think. And I think we need to have it all together rather than saying, you know, a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And, and it's, uh, I'll ask your indulgence to bring it back at the next um, special board meeting. We would you would be in agreement, Mr. Kim? I think so. We need, uh, we need time, we more time. We need, yeah. I think so. We have a, a motion on the floor. Yeah, there's a motion. There's a, a motion on the floor. Pulling your second? I pulled my second. I'll pull my first. Bring okay. it back on May, March 12th with. Um, so we're going to table this? Ready to be approved. I mean, we need to hire, we need to post it. Can, gonna take can it come on, if while. we have a special board meeting, can it be at that one? Sure. Okay. So, so we're going to table we'll this? Move, table it to the next immediate. Um, board meeting and that it will have everything incorporated You're making a and motion? recommendations. And Make a motion to Is table. there a motion to table? Second that. Motion by Duarte, seconded to table, seconded by Mr. Calderon. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Ma Madam President, so I can yes, provide proper assistance to the superintendent as it's redrafted. Is the consensus that we should bring it back as a credential position? And maybe that's what we should do. And then if you don't like it, you can remove it <laughs> rather than have to add things. Correct. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. That's uh, what I had asked in the, in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yes. This uh, item I, can I please have five minutes? I need, I need a break. Thank yeah. you. Five minutes. Okay. Item I, discussion items, potential layoff of certificated personnel. Ms. Ambris? Yes. Um, this item is on the agenda. Uh, as you know, the March 15th deadline for um, layoffs, uh, et cetera, is, is coming up. Um, our intent was definitely not to have any layoffs this year, and that is still our, that's still our intent, that's still our philosophy, that's still our, our desire to not have to um, even uh, go to that, to that uh, position. Um, we have two uh, recent dilemmas that are uh, approaching our district. Uh, one is obviously um, we're facing a potential reduction in federal dollars in terms of our categorical uh, monies, uh, in particular Title I. We do have uh, at least 13 positions in our district that are funded through Title I. And so uh, if there's a reduction and not knowing yet what that amount is uh, specifically, uh, we feel that we may need to take a precautionary measure in terms of meeting um, a potential state deadline uh, for uh, the layoff. It should, should we have to cut these, uh, they are certificated positions, they are the <laughs> academic support teacher positions. Should we have to cut any of them or all of, up to all of them, that may signify a, uh, a need to lay off some teachers because uh, these positions may uh, require for the academic support teachers to return to the classroom and if that were the case obviously that would trigger a, a layoff further down the, the line of the less senior teachers. Uh, and then the second, uh, the second uh, potential uh, dilemma that we have here is a, an issue that we're having with, um, some with our migrant funding. Uh, when we had our FPM I believe a year and a half ago Dr. Spencer, yes. it was about a year and a half ago that we had our FPM, the Federal Program Monitoring. Um, the migrant, uh, the person who was doing the audit for the migrant program uh, stated some questions and, and, and included several findings uh, for our district to address. Our district has 
continue to address these issues. We believe that we had satisfied the, um, the findings. Uh, we've had little to no guidance from uh, the CDE uh, person in charge of, of, of that part of the audit uh, until recently. And recently we received notification that there was a potential that if we couldn't clear these findings by a certain date, I believe, or within a reasonable time, that w the district could be liable for up to $600,000 uh, in return of migrant <coughs> funds to the state. Um, their main issue has been uh, is the category of migrant counselor uh, a supplantation of services. They believe that migrant counselors um, shouldn't be migrant counselors. You know, you have counselors, and then if you have um, migrant program specialists, for example, they would be uh, serving the district students that are migrant students um, above and beyond the classroom, uh, and not necessarily, you're not supplanting, you're supplementing their program. And with, um, with that, the, the migrant program specialist that they recommended, for example, is a certificated position. It's just not necessarily one that would require a PPS credential. You know, so there are different, there are these, are, there are these two different um, potential triggers for us that uh, is impacting uh, the discussion of whether or not uh, if, if there is a need, would we need to uh, go with a layoff procedure. I've got a question regarding clarification of what you just stated. Is this a suggestion or is this a requirement? As you said, suggested or which one? I'm sorry. In regards to the job description for a migrant, um, I will allow Dr. Spencer or, or Dr. Estrada to speak a little bit more about it because they have had uh, direct conversations with uh, CDE. Or they've had more conversations with CDE than I have. We have had uh, a two meetings with ICOE because they are a part of this conversation as well. But they last week did have a conference call and were able to bring a number of findings down to, I believe, three now. So I'll have either Dr. Estrada or Dr. Spencer address that part. Okay. Why don't you both come up to the podium? Come up to the Can you give us a summary of what uh, your meetings revealed? <laughs> yeah, the, the last conversation that we had with CDE involved um, a person from the finance department, uh, the gentleman who was the lead on our FPM visit, uh, and the reviewer for migrant ed. Uh, in that, we basically came down from seven findings to three. We have been providing volumes of information since November 2011 is when this started. We've provided a binder about three inches thick of information. It has not been deemed sufficient, but yet we didn't get guidance as to what would be sufficient. We're now down to three questions. Um, one of the issues are the issue that would that has the potential to cost us the six hundred thousand dollars is the counseling positions uh, this the belief of the reviewer was that those are supplementing i'm sorry that they're supplanting normal counseling services we tried to explain that we don't have norm that we didn't have counseling services for the elementaries where we had the uh, migrant counselors working. We did have one migrant counselor at the high school that um, it has been a contention of his that it was a supplant instead of a supplement. We have the other viewpoint. Uh, the other contention dealt with the hours that the counselors worked, whether they could provide services for students and parents after school hours. Uh, Mr. Bergali, at the point of the review 
had told them that that would be a negotiated item, that we couldn't just arbitrarily change their hours, that it would need to be negotiated with the union. So far, there's not been an agreement made to change the hours. So those I, are I, things that Again, are, my question yeah. was earlier, is that a a suggestion from migrant or from the s CDE? You mean the job or description. Uh-huh. The job description is a suggestion from ICOE, actually, uh, in order to meet the requirements from the CDE. What happens if that job description doesn't materialize? Right. And, and, and as a response, part of the recommendation from, from ICOE is because this, uh, there has been a position in El Centro, I believe the school district, that is currently working um, for them and it's also within compliance, meaning that part of the services would uh, entail direct services to students after school. For example, part of the services could include um, study skills, uh, direct um, instruction on study skills, any uh, form of support the students can benefit from after school hours. And that could be, for example, from uh, two to four. So the schedule for counselors might change. Th that's what they're proposing. So if, for example, we, if they start two hours later, they might be to uh, work those hours with direct student services. Now, uh, Dr. Spencer, shared this. she said that it, was, it hasn't been negotiated. Is it because ACT doesn't want to negotiate, or is it because it hasn't been brought to the table? I do don't they know even know about this? Brought. It has not been brought to them yet. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So. Okay. Yeah. So. And, and, and the other piece uh, about the recommendation is to change the name, as, as it was discussed, from migrant ed counselor to migrant education specialist. That's uh, the, the other part of the recommendation. Still a certificated position. Still a certificated position. That is correct. Okay. Not, a not necessarily what? a PPS credential. Right. Okay. What, what title? Migrant education specialist. Now, when you when you're talking about, I don't know if this person that you talked to over in uh, up north, when you talked about that, uh, and they mentioned the, uh, supplementing uh, materials, the hours in the afternoon. Did they talk about the past program? Was that one of the discussions? Uh, this no. person being, no, they they didn't bring up the issue or any is any concerns with the past program. Okay, nothing at all. Okay. Board members, any other questions? Mr. Kim, do you have questions? For the issue, for the issues with the the CDE and ICOE, that we shouldn't have this kind of a uh, problem if we, if we had uh, if we have enough uh, staff. I think as our school district tried to using the. Uh, what's called the migrant counselor to using regular counselor. That is the issues we have. Because the uh, counseling position, they were they were serving to the regular students, not immigrants. Not migrant. Not migrant, migrant, migrant counselors serve only migrant students, and that no. has, has always been the case. But we said, well, one of the one of the issues of counseling position is they are serving other students too. No. That. That was the perception of oh, that was the, the, perception. the perception of the gentleman who was auditing uh, the migrant program mm -hmm. um, documentation. Okay. Um, but that is not the truth. And you know, the reality is that our migrant counselors serve migrant students. Mm -hmm. And we provided the logs. And there is a documentation to support that. So we have issues then the working hours. Is that it was that one of the issues because we're not serving after hours? Yes, that is one of the issues. And the other one is uh, the credential issues? The credential is not an issue. It's just that if, the, if our district went with uh, eliminating the position of migrant counselor mm -hmm. and creating the position of migrant program specialist or migrant education specialist, at that point, uh, the persons serving in those positions are not required to have a PPS credential. They may have a PPS credential, but also a regular teaching credential would suffice. It wouldn't, it, it wouldn't have to be a specialized uh, pupil services credential. Uh, but still It could be a multiple subjects credential. It could be a, a, a single subjects credential. Uh, it, 
and or a uh, PPS credential. But it has to be a certificated person. Yes. That, that means that we don't have any issues besides those uh, solving, uh, service hours. Excuse me? We don't have any issues. I don't see any issues then the way explaining we only have issues on the working hours they can be solved after school time. Well, the issue is that there needs to be an agreement between certificated. Yes, and that's the only yes. issues we have. And if we leave it as a migrant counseling position, excuse mm -hmm. me, I didn't mean to interrupt. If we leave it as a migrant counseling position, then mm -hmm. as a counselor, under the title of counselor, then they are required to have a pupil per, uh, PPS credential, pupil personnel services credential. Okay. You mentioned three, Dr. Estrada, you mentioned three problems. Now you've, you've only talked about two. What, what would be the third one? My perception. Uh, my understanding about the other, uh, I guess, issue or concern that needs to be addressed is the counselors working with parents uh, directly. And that may include providing training after school hours as well. So those are, again, from my uh, understanding from speaking with individuals from the state, is those, those are the things that he's suggesting or that he's also, you know, try to uncover some information on. Now, this person that you talked to, the one that gave you the initial seven, um, you, seven um, findings. findings, could you go above and beyond that person, make it an appeal? Is that possible? We've been working on that. Um, what happened is it got to the finance department. The finance department sent a letter to the county, and the county issued us a notice that uh, they could not pay. 600, up to $600,000 for our counselors, for our migrant counselors until this was cleared up. Mm -hmm. uh, then we were able to get the gentleman who was the lead on our FPM visit into it. And uh, basically I hadn't been involved. Uh, Ms. Salaya had been working on it when she was here. Dr. Estrada took it over uh, and uh, this week, uh, Mr. Hawthorne and I got into the mix, and <coughs> when we did, the conversation changed from having to pay money back to uh, getting back into compliance. And so we're back in the compliance. We hope to keep it there and not have to give up any funding. Okay. So that's where we are right now. We have a telephone conversation slated for Thursday at 2 o'clock with CDE again. Any further questions? Okay, so I have some more questions. So what I mean is right now so we are jeopardizing our $600,000 budget because we have to return the money to the immigrant, uh, what's called the migrant program, migrant. which is the if formal former administrations uh, couldn't imply that their job right. No, I don't that's think that's not the case. It, it's, I think it's a matter of compliance, but you are entitled to your own perception. But it's a compliance. It's we're not, we're not, uh, fol uh, we're not following the compliances. That's correct. We need to be in compliance. The, the problem was that we were trying to be compliant, but we were not receiving guidance from CDE. They, they kept saying, you're not compliant, but they, and we provided what they asked us for, and then they wouldn't tell us what else they needed. So that, w that has been our issue. And part of the information that we submitted, actually, it's logged because we use a system called the case, which means that everything that we submit for them for review, it's logged, including the time and date and the, re and the ex explanation that we put how that satisfies the concern. So everything we have in a binder, we have, we're ready to present during our phone conversations to address the issues that they're still having about uh, the supplanting issue. So, okay. so, so uh, Madam President, was so one of in order to correct this, one of the issues would change would be changing the working hours. We will be better able to answer that after Thursday's phone call. It's a possibility. I believe this board was give had given directive to previous administration that to sit down with with uh, the union in order to modify the counselor's hours because they did not, parents couldn't come in after <coughs> three o'clock exactly. um, and stuff like that. I guess 
Apparently, that was never done. And if that would have been done last year, <laughs> we wouldn't have laid off the counselors. But apparently, that intent was not done because now we're here hearing it. But the other one is changing the title or creating it's, a title. It's changing the job, the job description. description. It's Correct. more than just, it, we're, not, so we're not saying we're, just change a title. We're talking about changing a job description. Not changing. The district has the ability to create a job description. Yes, ma'am. With another job title. Mm -hmm. Well. Okay. There's no movement. So further we can, discussion? We can change the, we can make a new title. Would you, would you wait until Thursday or to yeah. see what happened after the meeting? Can, that they have to be changed. We'll and, and, and if we're talking about a special board meeting, we can bring this back. I understand, but there has to be a way around it. We're not going to pay $600,000. We're not going to lay off anybody, so. There's always a way around things. Okay. We don't want to lay off anybody. All That's right. the point. I, I understand that. Mm. Okay. Well, oh. Okay. It's, it's, it's a personal issue. Are we going to talk about migrant? Are we done talking about migrant? And are we going back to the regular uh, layoff? I don't know. Uh, if uh, do you want to talk about that? I think Possible. the migrant we already talking, so we I, I think he uh, should I go think back um, to the layoff. Excuse me, gentlemen. I think that Mrs. Ambris did speak to both points. Well, uh, Ms. Aguilar, I, I, I understand that we have um, time limits for the board members, but I think this is a very important issue. We signed a contract last year saying that there was not going to be any layoffs for certificated, and w in front of us we have discussion for layoffs. I am not in favor of that, and to answer to the union, I, this is not coming from me, just to make sure. Um, when I si sign a contract, I try to abide by the contract. And um, we still haven't even gone to the table with CSEA. That's another issue. I mean, if, if we need to save money, it, we need to get back at the table with CSEA. And if we're talking about general funds money, that's where the money's at. You know, we can't. I sit here time and time again, and people at the podium look at me when they say about cuts, when they say about negativity, when they say about this. But here's an opportunity that we have that this doesn't have to even come forward. We know we have to be in compliance, but we know we're out of compliance in other areas. We know we don't <coughs> want to pay a fine, but yet we did make some savings through negotiations last year and I'm seeing all that fight on both sides, all those compromises that we made at the end slip away. Why are they slipping away? Why? You know, we're talking about somebody's perception. There has to be a way to appeal. We want a state takeover and we can't make three, four migrant counselors stay, keep their jobs? We gotta get creative. We gotta start thinking out of the box. We can't continue to do this. You know, let's get to the table with CSEA. Let's see where we can find some money. We just can't make movements and certificate it when we have a signed contract. I am not in approval of any layoffs for certificated people. I'm not gonna do it. Well, I think I think we should put. I believe we should put more teachers in the classroom. We find the other way to any uh, way we have to find it to put the more teachers in the classroom. We are elementary level thirty five students in the classroom. That's horribly, horribly we are outnumbered. 
and we need to find the more money to put the more teachers instead of the uh, instead of layoff. <coughs> and Mr. Kim, I agree with you on putting more teachers, but we also out of compliance on the counselors from the WASP report. And yes. And we have to correct that. So we have to come to a medium. I mean, if it's if it's something simple that's changing working hours, they're not losing benefits, they're not losing anything. It's just a change, maybe an hour. An hour change could save this, this issue. But for some reason, somebody down the, long, down the way dropped the ball and never met with the union in regards to the changing of hours. We discussed it last year. Well. And that could have been something that could have taken out of this taken us out of this. But I agree with you. We need to put our teachers back in the classroom. Yes, we need more, uh, more counselors and teachers and put them back in, back in the classroom. I think if we can provide them more teachers to class students at the same time, if we ask the unions to uh, flexible on the counseling, uh, counselor's position hours, I believe, I believe they, will, they will happily agree with it. That's my opinion. But we have to find a way to money for our children. I, I was criticizing a lot of times. For example, we're going to spend $1.60 million more of lawyer consulting this year. That worth about 30 teachers worth. 30 teachers worth we're going to spend more money on the lawyer consulting this year. We should look into the different way to find the money to put our teachers in the classroom. Not for the teachers, but our children. They are suffering. We should not take any, any uh, tax, uh, uh, layoff, and we should hire more teachers and counselors. Thank you, Mr. Kim. Mr. Calderon? I think uh, along the line, uh, when, when you guys mentioned, and I thank you, Mr. Kim, and thank you, Ms. Ms. Rocky, we don't, maybe we don't agree on things, but I think at this point we're going to agree. Oh, they can hear me well. Um, the recording. Oh, recording. OK. Uh, but at, th at this time, I am not going to agree I am not going to agree to any uh, uh, teacher layoffs or rifts. Uh, we have done it in the past, and I wasn't on this board. However, uh, the question that I want to ask whoever came up with this solution to just say layoff teachers or rift teachers is how is that going to benefit the students? Riffing teachers, oh, let's just riff 13 teachers, seven teachers, five teachers. It comes so easy. Well, tell it to the person that is going to that is going to be rift. Okay, uh, I don't, it's not easy. No, we have money. We we have money in in other in other areas. Uh, we may be able to pull from another from other areas. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> lawyer fees. We allotted tons of money. Take it away from that pool and bring it to the side. Okay, but I am not going to agree, and I'm going to say it out loud, I am not going to agree with one single teacher being revved this year. Ms. are you done? Is that it? I'm done. Thank you. Ms. Discarra? Um, you know, I, I agree with all the comments that, I, that have been made here. I, I think we're, we're really looking at... Um, a time and we've had a lot of conversations since my time here about the what we want and we haven't I think as a new board yet sat down and talked about our vision but I don't think anyone would um, disagree that our vision is to create an excellent educational system and educate an excellent um, environment for our students to grow uh, we're talking about newer facilities and, and all this technology that we approved in a, in a pre-list and now we're talking about getting rid of the folks that, are, that would essentially teach it. Um, filling classrooms in, a, in new facilities with, um, with the folks that really make things happen here in our district, which are our teachers. So, um, you know, to, to make it short, there's just, there's just no way I would agree to laying off any certificated personnel. I don't think I need to add anything else other than my wholehearted support of my colleagues. So we'll move on to board members' closing comments. I'm sorry. 
Um, closed session, Mr. Chad Cooper, ACT president. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> It, Ruth, I want to apologize. I, I didn't. You're, what, what you're saying is, in, in a way is right. Let's hurry up and fix these mistakes. But I also don't like negotiating under the gun because it doesn't allow me. I don't have staff, competent legal counsel that I can put to work tomorrow on this. It takes us days, hours, weeks, months to do this. Now, I do have people I can consult on the phone, but I, I'm outgunned with your multi-million dollar budget. <laughs> you know, Mr. W here could could spend all day and have his paralegals get to work on it tonight, probably. I don't know. I don't want to, I don't want to mess around with someone's working condition, <laughs> sign my name on it without talking to them. And that's why I'm a little bit leery about, once again, teachers, counselors, we're all in the same unit, psychologists, cleaning up the mess of past school boards and the administration. So let's breathe. I've heard it now. I'm going to talk to people in Central Union. Maria did bring it up. Ms. Ambrose did bring it up to me last week. What am I worried about? I'm worried about SBAC testing right now, OK? <laughs> So give us some time, and I don't know if you're going to discuss this in closed session or not, but I, I just thought I'd, I needed to come up here and save face with you, but I, I, you, you remember being a full-time classified employee, and I don't know what a counselor does. I got to talk to them, and I got to come up with a job description that's going to allow us to do the right thing. But what I say is restore every counselor on the list, put them to work in every school, and then we'll hire three mo migrant program specialists. That's simple. I think you got the money, too. Vote Voters of California. Jerry Brown wants to make Calexico equal with the haves. Because right now, a lot of our students, through no fault of their own, are have-nots. And I'm here to serve them, but I need help from the public, and you are our public servants. So please consider that at closed session. And it's not as simple as it sounds because when will the union be able to come up with this? I don't know, but I also don't want to get accused of delaying and causing a fine. Because if I, believe me, we're already preparing to negotiate next year and we have to survey and it's, I, I know you more than anyone, Ms. Aguilar and Ms. Duarte, have put in the time as a volunteer union leader. It takes a long time to round up the troops. So please just consider that before you want something done tomorrow, okay? Thank you. Thank you. And Madam President, for clarification, Mr. Cooper, um, I don't know if you heard, but I said since last year we were trying to change those hours, not, not yesterday, right, but not last week, I, last and, year. And, and I believe so you're directing that at administration. But, <laughs> but that's, that's the frustration I have, that work is not getting done rapidly. So when, when I say talk to the union, I don't mean talk to the union tomorrow. I know this is going to take some time. Because I know that if I come in at 8 o'clock every day, I don't want to come in at 9 because that means I'm going to get an hour later. But for the sake of the issue, i got to look at everything. I, I absolutely, I, I, I did not mean I, I fully, to I fully understand that, but we, we didn't hear that. about it last year. Mm -hmm. If we would have heard about it last year, we would have started w work on it, and, and I don't want... Um, you know, I, I don't want to face your negotiator <laughs> saying, well, yeah. if we don't sign this, we're going to have to lay off three counselors. What are you going to tell but, your unit members? But that's my frustration, <laughs> yeah, okay. Mr. Cooper. All right. Thank you. Moving on to item J, board members' closing comments. Mr. Kim. I was... I was sad to see the, the, uh, the agenda today, and I'm I'm kind of happy today because I could to get some agreement with the fellow board members to save our teachers for our children, and we kind of uh, cons uh, I believe now we both see too we can look into the other areas to cut the money for our children. 
Um, I was prepared for the uh, another another uh, was called the closing comment. Now I have to change the, my closing comment to more positive. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kim. Mr. Calderon. <coughs> Thank you, Madam President. Uh, it is I I I'm just like Mr. Kim. I was ready to. I had my guns drawn drawn and I shouldn't say, can't that. say that. Sorry. My big guns. My big guns. Um, <laughs> yes, that's what I meant. Um, uh, but it, it, seeing the positive that it, that it just happened, I'm sorry. <laughs> seeing the positive uh, that, uh, that, that what, you, what we just talked about, and seeing that uh, we all agree that um, uh, our children shouldn't suffer, and that we are in agreement that uh, by cutting uh, or by ripping uh, teachers, that would hurt them, I think we are on the right track. I think we are on the right path to uh, work for the betterment of our children, uh, to make them positive, uh, uh, to make them uh, good and positive citizens of Calexico. Uh, remember, these are, our, these are the children that are gonna go out and are going to uh, get um, uh, an education and come back and be uh, the next in line to take our jobs, to uh, follow suit in what we're doing. So we need to prepare our students. And if we don't have teachers in the classrooms, and we don't have counselors, if we don't have secretaries to, uh, or assistants to, uh, uh, to help students and make appointments, how can we expect the children, our children, Calexico Unified children, to do, uh, to do well in school? So it is all about the children. That's why we need to keep that in mind. When we are here because it's about the children. It's not about who gets more money or who has more power. It's not about that. It's because we need to make sure that we prepare, that we give our students, our children, the tools necessary to uh, better themselves and be prepared for society. So uh, I, I applaud the, the rest of the board members for uh, for the uh, decisions that we are about to make, uh, because I think uh, it sends the right I, uh, the right message to the community that we care for our children, and that uh, it's just simply riffing uh, teachers or sending layoff notices is is not going to solve anything. Okay. Yes, maybe it's gonna it's going to solve uh, saving uh, us a couple of, uh, of thousand dollars a month. But is that a, is that the real is that the real issue? And I I don't think that's a real issue here. The real issue is we need to be uh, proactive with what we're gonna do with uh, with uh, our children. And the only way to prepare our children is to give them the right tools for education. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Calderon. Ms. Duarte. First of all, I would like to thank Raúl Ureña for his nice comment that he made in response to me and we did have a nice conversation this morning um, in in regards to um, our school site properties I see that a lot of fences are coming down I don't know if people just are running into our fences just because or what but um, you know the accident at Rockwood school there's a fence down at the high school from a stolen vehicle one of our staff members um, and then there was the other fence, I can't remember, district office. district office fence, you know, so I don't know what's going on with the people of Calexico, but they need to learn how to drive now. But um, it's costing us some money on the fences. Um, and those, those are expenditures that we don't, we don't budget for, you know, but the money does go out in other areas. Um, also, I uh, want to make clarification on Mr. Ureña's comment where he said that I said that the company was going to take over food service. <laughs> that that was not that was not the intent. Um, it, but but I did uh, I I did find out that um, the company did ask for some questions in regards to the entire district, and uh, Mr. Caballero uh, will be putting giving him an assessment on the high school only. I want the whole. I would like to see the whole district assessed. Um, because if we're going to make it work, I don't just want to make it work for the high school, but I want to make it work for all of our students of Calexico. Um, 
in, in, into those, in, into that movement, and I'm glad that there was meat today in our lunches. <laughs> and, uh, real meat. Uh, excuse me? Real meat, real meat. And um, also, you know, um, I'm looking forward to this year to working together as to um, coming up with these solutions. You know, we, we have um, true positions in this district that need to be filled, and it's it's just a revolving door. We can't we can't get stabilized here. Um, but let's you know let's do something with the human resource. We, that 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 is a department that desperately needs a director. Um, and to make sure that we are in compliance, but um, let's let's think about what we put in the on the agendas, um, because I remember Ms. Vizcarra mm -hmm. saying, you know, we need to make the agendas towards towards our goals, and I don't I don't see it I don't I don't see them to the to our goal, goals. Uh, this year we have uh, approved a lot of trainings and stuff, but you know hopefully. The, all those trainings will come back and, and, and be helpful to, to our students and stuff. Thank you, Ms. Hortensia, for the attendance report. That's good. It's good that the point average is going up. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Duarte. Ms. Uno Vizcarra. Thank you. You know, I, I think we have, um, I think we're moving in the right direction, although I, I, I think we have a, a long way to go. Um, although I'm, I'm really optimistic that, that we're going to get there and we're going to do um, a lot of good things. I want to touch on a couple of things, and Mr. Ordeña mentioned the food program, and, I, and I'd also like to ask that, that this be broader than, than the high school. I, I think our, um, our younger students can definitely, I, I mean, they, they certainly appreciate um, the school and, and they they have less options in other words they, they can't leave the school like um, I think our high school students are, are doing um, and then that talk then that kind of brings my point to safety where we do have a lot of students that in, in the high school that, that do leave the school grounds and safety it becomes it becomes an issue um, attendance I was glad to see that report and I'm glad to see that we're doing better and I'm glad to see that we're looking at, at interventions not just sort of um, covering up you know where where there are faults but really looking at as to um, the pattern behind it you know why why are our students uh, missing and if we can sort of ad address it at the core at, at home really when, when it where it where it begins um, and, and, and I'll tell you what, just on, on a personal note, and I, so, and I know it's working because I, I got a letter um, about my daughter missing a lot, and of course, then I got mad at her right away, and I said, where are you? Um, but I had a nice meeting with Mr. Biscayda, and we, um, we worked it out, but <laughs> she has a lot of detentions. No, she <laughs> she's sick a lot. Um, but no, I, I, there's a lot, there are a lot of proactive things that are going on, and, and I appreciate that. What I'd really like to see as, as doing as, as, a, as a board, as a, as, a, as a unified district, is, um, again, I brought this up before, I, I, I'm going to ask for help personally to show me the, the vision that we're working towards, the goals that we're working towards. Do we need to revisit them? I mean, I'd like to visit them for the first time and know what we're working towards so that when I get an agenda, I can tie it to a global vision that we have that makes sense to me so that I may, when, I, when I'm researching, when I'm reading this, when I'm meeting with you, and um, I, I can make the best decision possible with, with our students in mind, with the staff at CUSD in mind, and know that we're, we're headed in, in um, futuristic direction. Um, I, we, you talked about Ms. Ambriz bringing us together for a board. I'm going to call it a retreat. I don't know if that was the language you used. And we talked about either the end of February or into March. And if we could get uh, an update if something's going on with that, I, I think that would be really beneficial. Yes, one of the things that, I, that I'm just going to need to get from all of the board members is a date preference during the week, weekend, et cetera. And that's really what I'll have Mrs. Burgos um, connect with you in terms of what, is, uh, what days are totally out for you. And, and it's better if you throw out dates that you okay. can present or Sounds you good. can 
Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> I concur in terms of uh, where my f colleagues have mentioned that it's important to have uh, our our retreats, our trainings that are that are tied into our mission, our goals, and objectives. Same thing. I agree with um, uh, Mrs. Duarte in regards to it being tied to the agenda. Um, in regards to school safety, I did speak to Ms. Donaldson. And I know that there, there are funds allocated or were allocated uh, or supposed to be allocated <laughs> <laughs> for uh, school safety. I have brought it up before. And that seems like a deja vu comment, huh? But I think it's been years, if not at least a decade, since uh, our, our, our campus security has had a comprehensive training. And I would request that 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 be a, one of one of one of the things that we look into. It's in their contract. It's in their contract. It's in their contract. That's right. I know. I negotiated that language. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I remember that. <laughs> um, the other thing is also um, I'd like to hear uh, an update where we are at in terms of uh, the people that were identified having training, parent training, it, where, where are we at with that committee? Um, I would like to ask that the board as a whole be informed on a timely basis of activities at school site. I know some of you are pretty, some of the principals out there are pretty diligent about keeping us informed. If you can inform us well in advance, it, it, it I, I, at least from my perspective, I, I need at least two weeks to be able to get you know my, my boss to give me a green light, particularly if it's during the work 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 hour working hours. Um, I again reiterate that uh, uh, we can need to improve in our communication with our community to inform our parents fully uh, and on a timely fashion. I know we have a public information officer, but I don't see you know, monthly reports, I don't see something like that. I would like to see, I see postings on our Facebook page. I myself have posted things, but um, I think we need to have a plan. And again, um, um, we did um, ask for, at least I remember asking for, if we can form a committee that does a comprehensive information outreach to our community, to our parents. I mean, we have, we have technology and we have social media. We have our web page. Let's work together to get provide um, a good um, source of resources, good resources for our parents, for our for our students, um, with a continued collaboration of Colexico Unified School District, labor parents, uh, um, and the board. It's incumbent upon all of us to provide a good experience. Um, I think that's it. No Valentine? I'm sorry? No Valentine. No Valentine. <laughs> Can you please, uh, Mr. Wiley? Or Wiley, I'm sorry. Wiley. I keep calling you Wiley. <laughs> Wiley. <laughs> uh, announcement of convening into closed session? Yes, yes. May, may I add something too? Yes, sir. Um, school districts all over the state at this time of year consider layoffs. And superintendents bring that option to the boards for the board to decide. And um, so it being on the agenda, I, I, I can hear people's thoughts in the, in the, in the audience. Um, it's the duty of the superintendent to bring the, the issue forward. And it gave you an opportunity to take a stand. Um, and I, ha I thought I had to say that. Okay. Uh, and in terms of going into closed session now, we're going into closed session to discuss the items that are on the agenda as indicated, and then we will return for more activity. Thank you. We will convene to closed session at 9.37.
We reconvene at 11.03. Mr. Weiler. Yes, please make the report on the reportable action. Your mic. There was a, in the closed session, there was a motion to extend time by an hour uh, that was passed, I believe, 5 0. Um, and now we're going to go who back. Was the, who was the motion by? Um, I didn't know. I did not notice. I, I think it was. Um, <coughs> I think you motioned and uh, you, s or I second. Who second? Do you remember, Mr. Kim? My yeah, oh. And Mr. Calderon second. Okay. Thank you. And we are now back in open session. Uh, on item N. Okay, item N1, approved certificated employment report for February 26, 2013. Is there a motion? I move to uh, pr approve. Motion by Calderon. Is there a second? Second. Second by Duarte. No discussion? Yeah, I believe uh, some of the process has to have a questioning. I'm not happy with the process being done, handled by the districts and the higher ones. Thank you, Mr. Kim. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 No. Motion passes 4 1. Item N to approve classified employment report for February 26, 2013. Is there a motion to approve? I move to approve. Motion by Calderon. Is there a second? Second. Second by Duarte. Any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes 5-0. Item 01, posting of superintendent's position as per prior board's direction. Mrs. Zambris? Uh, Madam, Madam President. Or, yes, Mr. Weller. Madam President, um, if I may. Um, this is not an evaluation of the superintendent. Uh, an evaluation of the superintendent would be a closed session item, but this is an item in terms of whether the superintendent's position should be posted. I believe, and maybe Ms. Ambrose will speak to this, I believe Ms. Ambrose felt an obligation to bring this forward um, because of the prior board's direction, and this is an open session action item about the posting of a job. Thank you for the clarification, Mrs. Ambris. Uh, yes, um, trustees. This is it's it's a, an important item, simply because um, when the previous board voted to um, name me inter interim superintendent and subsequently um, remove the interim title and and make it my position as a superintendent, um, I believe there was a vote uh, with direction that that would happen uh, and that the contract would be effective uh, from the date of November to June 30th. And um, with uh, the high probability that this position would be um, posted in the spring, you know, either um, uh, recruited and, and posted in the spring for, for next year. You know whether I would stay or not would would determine on whether uh, this was going to be posted and and um, so I just want the the current board to know that that was the direction of the previous board and so if the direction is that um, the position of superintendent of Calexico Unified School District be posted then 
in fairness to uh, any uh, I into finding the best person for the job, uh, and in fairness to myself, that I do believe I'm a good person for the job, but that's not uh, the matter here. The matter is that in in finding in fairness to everyone, including myself, then the decision needs to be made as to whether or not the position will be um, uh, f flown, posted, etc. And then you may need to make a determination whether or not you're going to look for a search, a search agency, to do so. I make the motion to open the position as we previously uh, directed. There's a motion by Mr. Kim to post the position of superintendent as prior per prior board's direction. Is there a second? A second. Motion by Kim, seconded by Ms. Duarte. Ms. Duarte, did you want to speak to it? Yes, um, and, and, and for clarification purposes, uh, we, we, the three board members that are, have been here the most, um, we know that this discussion did take place, and it was, um, it was uh, also said on, on the date um, that we hired Maria that I think the question was asked, what happens if she doesn't get the job? Well, without, that's why we permanently haven't filled her position as assistant superintendent. The, t the, the issue was not to, 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 to terminate her employment with CUSD, but we did say that we would open the position and, um, and she, she can apply, you know, and if she's the best qualified, that's great. We continue business as usual. Um, but we did we did say that, and um, that's why I'm, I'm I'm in favor of it. She did place a phone call to me and say, "Is this what you guys will still want to do?" And I said, "In all fairness, we have to because it was it was mentioned that we would do that." Um, and I'm, I'm I'm still I don't know if the new if the board feels that if there is some some somebody else out there, you know she would fall back to her assistant superintendent position because there was never any intent of letting her go at all. So um, I'm glad that she stepped up to, to the plate. It's a big plate, but she's filling in the, the, sh the shoes of it. <laughs> um, I don't know whose shoes because there hasn't been good shoes in a long time, but um, she's doing the job. But anyways, in all fairness, let's open the position, post it, and um, if there's no good candidates out there, then the best candidate is going to be somebody's, you know. Um, that's all I have to say. Mr. I, Calderon? I do have a, a comment. Now, when, when it was discussed that it, will, that it would be, how did, I'm sorry, how did this conversation come about? She got. When, when she, we were discussing her contract. So she was interim superintendent. Mm -hmm. And. Then the board, the previous board, decided to make her a full super, uh, a permanent superintendent. A permanent till June thirtieth. To June thirtieth. She has a contract till June. 30th. And then open, oh. open the position. Okay, so at that time, it was understood that the position would be open. Is that is that how it was said? Yes. yes. It was taught. She she was there in the conversation. Okay. She was present when we were talking about that. Because she was going to stay interim till the end of the year, till mm -hmm. the end of this year. So, she approved. She 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 put forward a contract to become superintendent, and we stipulated on her contract mm -hmm. that she's only superintendent of this district till June thirtieth. Okay, so that was once again that was the conversation. Yes. She under you understood that, and you agreed to that mm -hmm. that that will be. Yes, if I may. Um, what was going on, uh, and I'll be very frank, I, I shared that with some of our, the board members uh, of the previous board, that um, it was becoming, not becoming, it was, a, it was a difficulty to come to work day by day and have people question whether I was going to be here beyond the very next board meeting. Because that was a question that came up quite a bit. Mm -hmm. There was also, um, 
a question, as we all know, uh, the rumor bill, that there were former superintendents who were uh, uh, trying to approach uh, the board as to if they could consider them for the positions and uh, have me removed from interim. And so given that the district was going through different uh, levels of uh, would, a, lo a lot of transition at the time and knowing that we the kind of person that I am is take the bull by the horns and just you know take the charge and uh, surrounding my, myself with the excellent team that Calexico does have uh, here uh, at the district uh, across all the schools uh, I made a proposal to the board members that um, they demonstrate to the community that they had a belief in the leadership of this district and that if they truly believed in the leadership of this district, i.e. myself as who at the time was interim superintendent having to continue to make decisions and be the face of the district whether interim or not, that at the very least um, I wanted the board to consider removing the interim title and that I had no opposition to the board um, placing a timeline on that if they wished to make June 30th the last effective date for the final effective date for my superintendency then that would be that would be fine with me um, given that they would at the very least demonstrate to the community that who they had at the helm facing their uh, facing the the issues every single day is someone that they believed in because the community deserves that they deserve to know that who who I am and w and what I and what I'm all about is a reflection of my ethics is a reflection of the work and the integrity that I bring to the table every single day D uh, and yes it was part of the the, the agreement well, yes the you yes you agree to that yes absolutely Ms. Um, you know, my, my, my take, you know, when, when we talk about the best or most qualified person for, for a position, we talk about that, the qualifications uh, the, in terms of what's best for the district. You have to have some, a base to compare those qualities to. This board does not have that, and as far as I know, um, I don't know what goals or mission or vision were given to our superintendent so that I can say, well, based on this, I'm going to look for something better, because I, I don't know. I haven't been given that. Um, I don't know, and I didn't hear it here, and I know I didn't hear it in the meetings I would come to, that there were any parameters set around what the expectation was for this position for this, this current superintendent I'm, I mean Ms. Ms. Ambris, um, so that this new board could say well given given the goals that were given given the the direction that was given here's what's been accomplished here's here's what's not um, I, I think it's premature for this board to move forward in posting this position until we all sit down and say this is the direction we we want you to go and these are the things we'd like to see accomplished I, I find it completely premature because no one has given this new board any parameters on what we were to look for on what we were to base this best uh, we're talking about being fair um, in fairness then I think I, I don't know whether Ms. Ambris has the goals that we're supposed to be working for but then in fairness we don't have them as a new as a new board so to be able to say let's go and search for something else again in fairness we talked about saving money and and um, not laying off anybody conducting a search at this point is going to be also an expense that we'd have to um, consider um, the, with the view of, of moving forward and pushing forward and all the things that we need to accomplish this is one of those things that we also need to wrap our heads around and and, and start there and say what what are people working towards we talked about 
earlier in this meeting, when we bring something to the agenda, it has to be pointed in some direction. So this is on here based on a previous board direction. I understand that. Well, something should have been done two, three months ago so that the new board had in front of, of us uh, the direction that we were supposed to be um, guiding the work and the ethic and the accomplishments towards. And I, and I don't have that, so I think it's completely premature at this point to, to post this position. Thank you. It's my belief that um, this district has been through a really difficult period. Um, I believe Ms. Ambris has stepped up to the plate admirably. Um, are there areas of improvement? Of course, and, and I've shared my, my concerns and my, and my ideas with Ms. Ambris, and, and, um, and, I, and I think that she does do what she's telling us, that she puts her everything into the job, and, uh, and I, I see that. I also believe it's premature to, to do this, and I also think it sends a wrong message. I will remind our colleague, my colleagues that uh, of how many, uh, how many superintendents we've gone through in the last couple of years. Uh, has that I, I want to say that I'd, I'd like for us to um, consider stability and, and providing a direction, and, and we even ha haven't even evaluated our superintendent. So, though that's that's my my opinion, and um, and I will vote accordingly. Okay, can I so tell? If you finish, I think you already spoke, Mr. King. I didn't spoke. Oh, please go ahead. You made the motion correct. Okay. First of all, we already had the uh, agreement and the. When we're contracting, we also we supposed to open the positions. I believe nobody denies on that time. And second, and the further our our responsible for the community to try to get best uh, superintendent for the community. That is uh, that is why our PP process we are opening positions for the community. If if. Uh, Ms. Ambris is good, the superintendent. Probably during the process, we can say, well, this is the best one we had. So we're going to keep him. So in a way, it's even we open the position in certain very limited uh, expenses, even she, we uh, recontracting Ms. Ambris make her position to the community to uh, strong because we, uh, she's been hired as comp competition, and we do, we do our job to the community to try to look for the best one we can have for the community at that point. I believe we should open the position to, to try to work diligent to look for the better superintendent for the, our community. Thank you, Mr. Kim. So we have on the motion on the floor is a motion by Mr. Kim, seconded by Ms. Duarte, posting the superintendent, superintendent's position as per prior board direction. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Mr. Calderon? No. Ms. Zuno Vizcarra? No. No. Motion fails. This board meeting will now adjourn at 11.24. Thank you and good night. Hold on before people leave. Are we going to have a special board meeting? Availability for a special board meeting. Board members, please look at your calendars or your availability for next week. Not me. Not next. You're not available next Tuesday. No, not this. There's next a Tuesday. city council meeting. Fourth and the sixth board members.